Hello my friends, John LaRuffy here with another Straight Up Solo, and in this episode we're going to be looking at the Guild of Merchant Explorers. I'm going to show you how this game plays from a solo perspective, and then I will tell you my thoughts on it. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay folks, and as usual, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, because it greatly helps me out. So, I've already played through three out of the four rounds of this game, because I wanted to show you how it looks as you kind of finish it up. This is a very simple game to play. There's not a ton of rules. It is a light game, um, but there are, it doesn't mean that there aren't any decisions to be made or any fun to be had, okay? So what's basically gonna happen is you have these little cubes. This is a cube pusher, okay? This is pretty much a thematic, or a, pardon me, a themeless Euro, all right? The theme doesn't matter, although it is nice that they have nice little board artwork and such. But this is very much a mechanics-based kind of game. And I would say it's kind of a cross between uh, Kingdom Builder and also maybe, I don't know. The goals here <clears throat> kind of remind me of, um, well, I don't know. Anyway, Kingdom Builder is, is definitely the way I feel about it. But these goals change things. And the way that the cards come up is much more much more fulfilling than Kingdom Builder. Kingdom Builder is just draw a card, place one, draw a card, place one, and then you have little tiles that help you do things. I think this is a better um, better system. But uh, let me just show you how it's played. It's very simple. Whether you play it solo or you play it multiplayer, the rules are almost identical. The only thing in solo is you have to complete all three of these goals, and when you do, which I have already, you put a cube of yours on there marking you have done it. Also, as the game goes by, the higher point reward, you know, becomes unavailable, then the lower point will become unavailable, and then you just have to do it just to get the actual card done. If you don't complete all three goals, then you lose the game. But in addition, depending on the skill level you want to go for, you have to score at least uh, 90 points for easy, uh, 120 for normal, and 150 for hard. Okay, and again, you have to get all of the goals done. So let's just go ahead and see how it plays. On your turn, you're going to flip a card. And when you flip a card, depending on what it is, depends on what you're able to do. When you first flip these cards right here that have the one, two, three, and then the one, two, three on them, you're going to draw two cards out of this special Explorer deck. And this Explorer deck or Investigation deck give you all of these different types of cards that are much more powerful than the basic ones. And you have to choose between two of them. Whichever one you keep, you put over here. And then when you draw that in subsequent rounds, you take this action. So this says, explore one sea area, then explore up to five adjacent spaces uh, to this sea space. So <clears throat> the rules state basically that you can start and you, you can always put off of one of your explorers that you've already put down. But also you can start from any of the villages that you've put down. And I'll show you how that goes in a second. Plus, this starting city over here, this main one, um, the capital city, you can always put next to that. So, uh, right now, in order to score the most points, because I've accomplished my goals, I'm going to want to do stuff like cover up coins to get one point per coin. I'm going to want to uh, explore these wrecks. That could give me some set collection points or some other things. Um, if I can explore a tower, I will get 10 points. <clears throat> Excuse me. Which is good. And by the way, I just realized that I forgot to get my 8 points for exploring that tower in the previous round. So I'll just do that right now. Let's go ahead and toss in 10, 20, 30. I've got my points off to the side here. 40 and replace it there. So there we go. We toss in the two. Okay. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do an explore action. I'm going to do it off of this guy because I'm going to try to get some of these things linked in uh, to get some points. So I'm going to explore this C space right here. And then it says up to five adjacent ones. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And that's my turn. I draw another card. It says number three. So number three action for me was explore one C space, then explore up to three connected spaces to this C space in a straight line. All right. Well, like I said, I'm going to that tower. So probably the best thing for me to do would be to explore this C space, which is adjacent to one of my previously placed explorers. And 
go in a straight line here. One, two, three. That covers up two coins, so I score two points for that, and I'm getting closer to this tower. Okay, we draw another card. Oh, arrow one. Arrow one card says, explore any number of connected grassland, desert, and mountain spaces in a straight line. So the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to explore these in a straight line right here, and I'll show you why. So I'm going to put down this first one. That's going to give me a coin, a coin, nothing, nothing. And I'm going to explore this city over here to hopefully turn it into a trade post. So that's two coins. So that's two points. Plus, if I can connect two cities, <clears throat> this one has a three on it. If I connect it to, for instance, this four, I would take four times three is 12. I would score 12 coins, and then I would block off one or the other of those so I can't score it in subsequent turns or subsequent rounds. So that's one way to make some decent points. Also, because I just covered almost all of those regions, I need to cover this grassland. If I cover that final grassland, I will have completely explored a region and I then can replace one of my cubes with one of these or, um, villages and the village will score me four points at the end of the game or I'm sorry, right away. So let's just see how the cards keep coming out. Okay, that is one mountain space. So with a single mountain space, I could explore this tower via wild, which would be good, except I'm gonna save that for a little bit later. I actually want to, well, or I could do this one. No, it's a mountain space, so it's gotta be a wild or a mountain. I'll go ahead and put it there. So I put it there. I immediately replace that with a tower. And I'm going to get 10 points. Drawing another card here. Two of whatever I want, but they have to be touching. So in this case, they have to be two in a row. Well, I've got just the solution for that. This one and this one. So again, that's four times three now. I can make a trade post with that. That'll be worth 12 points. <clears throat> and with the 12 points, then we replace, we'll go ahead and block this one off here, just in case I can score that again. So that was on a grassland. So it's a grassland guy. There we go. Drawing another card now. Three C spaces. Okay, they also have to be in a straight line. Well, that's good. I've got a spot right here that can give me um, a ruins, or I can go right here. I'll go right there, because maybe I'll have a way, although I don't think I will, to get that other treasure. But let's go do that. Let's get the ruins. So when I put the ruins down there, I can only explore that once. So I put a treasure chest down it, draw a treasure card, and I get to place a cube anywhere. Perfect. Well, that's exactly what I want, because now I can explore this one. And this says for every town that I or village that I uh, have in a mountain space, like for instance this one, I'll get one point at the end of the game. Okay, two more turn, three more turns left. So this is explore two grassland spaces anywhere. So with that in mind, let's see. I could hook up that town. That doesn't really do me much. What I will do is I'll just go for some cheap points. Maybe there's a better move, I don't know, but I'm going to put one over here to cover off on that two. And I'll put one over here to cover off on the ones. So that's three more points. As you can see, you're trying to get points, you know, in any way you can, being as clever as possible with it. I don't know if it's clever or not, but that's what I did. Okay, now two desert spots anywhere. So in the desert region, I can put one on this town right here, which is great. So that's two times four is eight more. Let's go ahead and score eight more. And we're going to go ahead and put this right there. So I can't use that again. And I have one more desert. And this one gives me a coin. Is there anyone anywhere else that's better? I don't think so, so I'll just take the coin. 
All right, final move of the game. It is the one, two, three card. It means I can use any of those cards one more time. And so that would give me another treasure if I wanted to go out there. I can't really connect another town, although that would be great if I could. But I can't. <clears throat> I, haven't re I haven't filled in any complete regions this round. So that hasn't gotten me anything either. Hmm. Maybe the best thing to do would be to just get that one and hope for the best. So this says explore one C space. I'll use this right here. And I'm, there might be a better move. Um, might be something I could do to chain things longer. <clears throat> Actually, there is a better move. Much better. Watch this. So... This is the go in a straight line. Well, I can go in a straight line and connect three with the four. So that's two, four on the coins, plus this guy. Boy, am I glad I kept that one open this whole time. <clears throat> so that was four plus another 12. That's 16. That's a strong move. So you're really trying to look for these little pockets of points, right? Some way to stretch it as far as you can to score as much as you can. All right, and so that will be it. That is the end of the round and also the end of the game. So in order to win, like I said, you got to count up your points and you're going to go ahead and see if you connect, completed all these goals. Well, I completed the goals and let's see how we did in the points here. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100, 105, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So 114. So that would qualify me for um, almost a normal win, I think. Yeah, a little short of the normal win. So I would have lost that game playing a normal. Uh, this is my first game. I'll just say it's easy. Yeah, I won. Um, but basically, that's it. So let's go ahead and go back up, and I'll tell you what I think about it. Oh, wait. By the way, I should say, at the end of each round, you then clear off all of your Explorer tiles even though that was the end of the game and the only thing you're left with is the different towns that you've had throughout the game as starting spots not towns but villages um and i think that's it i don't even think you can start from the towers but i could be wrong about that i have to look so it's actually kind of interesting because you can go someplace and then you then you have to kind of retreat and if you don't fill out some stuff you can't get back there so easily so there is some strategy on filling out these regions so that you can kind of put one of those villages in place and then expand from that side or that area next time i really like that that's a good strategic element to this game or tactical element, on how you want to put it um that does add i think uh some for some nice choices and some nice strategy okay folks that is the gist of this game actually that's the entirety of this game almost you saw a full end round but you're seeing what's actually happening and i would say that this game plays identically whether you're playing solo or you're playing with multiple people because there is no difference in the rules really you're either beating your own score with goals uh, or you're trying to beat other people but this is very much a like a flip and right game without the right i've seen that described that way and i agree um it isn't very difficult to learn but it is very enjoyable to play. I really like this game. I like the fact that, and also, by the way, I was looking for this style of game at this level of weight. Um, and so if I was looking for a heavy game or looking for something with deep theme or whatever, this game would be not the game, right? This, this theme is pasted on, it could have been anything. It could have been a field, it could have been animals, it could have been you know, whatever. I, it could have been anything. Space. What? It doesn't matter. The point is, is that it's a good little mechanic. Um, they give you four maps. Each map has um, six gold cards, of which you'll only play with three. So you are going to have a different feel most every time you play it, which I think is cool. But what really adds, I think, to the game are all these different investigate cards. When you have to make that choice of which one you want, that really changes the moves that you have available to you in this game. And it's a quick game. There's no way this is gonna take more than 20 minutes to a half hour to play. Um, <clears throat> which is good because I kind of find it's like a great one to play 
when you just want a nice relaxing wind down experience. You don't want something super heavy. You don't want something super long. This is one of those kinds of games. I wouldn't say it's a filler because you have to think about what you're doing. Um, I always think of filler games as kind of like almost, you know, they kind of play themselves, right? No, you got to do some thinking here. And, and depending on where you put your villages, depending on where you go on the map, that will greatly influence how the game plays out. So I actually do think there is a good amount of strategy, even though this is a very simple game. So it kind of falls into that simple to learn, but I wouldn't say difficult to master. I would say, um, you know, moderate to master. I'm sure that these other, the other maps, this is just the first one, the basic one, that you have, you know, different things you got to figure out. How am I going to accomplish these goals? And it's not like it's going to be impossible, but it's going to be enough, I think, to help you feel like it's a fresh experience of uh, time and time again. So I really like this game. I think it is identical solo as it is multiplayer. So this is clearly a solo friendly play it by all you want. There's no real interaction with anything. It's just to beat your own score with, with some conditions. So if you want an Automon, not getting that. It's just, uh, just, you know, kind of all up to you and how clever you can be with those moves. So if this is what you're looking for, I think you're going to like it. It's not too expensive. Um, there's a decent amount of content in here. If, uh, if this is not what you're looking for, if you're looking for something more thematic, heavier, um, more actions, you know, this is really flip and place, flip and place, then you're not going to want to look into this game. But I think this is, uh, this demonstrates pretty effectively what you get one way or the other. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. Whatever you play in the future, hope you have a fantastic time doing it. Take it easy, everybody.